Welcome everyone to the STOA. Uh, today uh, we have my friend, our friend Joe Lightfoot uh, from um, the Lightfoot podcast and the author of A Collective Blooming. Uh, and Joe has been producing some fire pieces on his blog lately. Uh, and the one that we're going to be talking about today is uh, called The Liminal Web. Uh, and it was uh, the, the intention of that article was to describe sort of the, I don't know, intellectual, spiritual scene that uh, perhaps the Stowe and adjacent spaces belong to. Uh, and this scene sort of ran by other names at some points, like the Sense Making Web, the Meta Tribe. And uh, Joe, quite a, like as he usually does, he, he mapped it out quite well uh, and it created a, a lot of discussions on Twitter. So uh, I thought we would uh, go talk about it here today. And uh, how today's gonna work, I'm gonna take Joe in a moment and he's gonna share a screen, present on the, the liminal web. And then um, Joe and I will have a conversation and then we'll pivot to Q and A. So if you have any questions anytime, time, throw them in the chat uh, and then you can ask your question to Joe. And then there might be a moment where we just turn off the, can uh, the, the recording and then we just like have a free associative conversation. So that could happen anytime. Um, and uh, yeah, that being said, Joe, so good to have you back at the STOA. Yeah, good to be here, Peter. So I'm here to chat with you about the liminal web. Let me just get this Zoom thing out of the way. Yeah, mapping an emergent subculture of sense makers, meta theorists, and systems poets. So let's dive right in and take a look at the visual that kind of gives an overview of the liminal web. So as you can see, it's a pretty broad, all-encompassing scene, and I'd suggest that most people on this call, uh, you're already a, a part of this, so you, you probably know it quite well, but those of you that aren't, this is going to serve as an introduction. So I suggest that the Liminal Web kind of uh, came together about five years ago, and in this image, what there is in that central circle, there are um, six platforms that I think really helped form this scene. And with all scenes, it was kind of an overlapping of other communities, but then at some point it kind of congealed and that created its own kind of an essence at which point naming it kind of makes sense. And I'd, I'd suggest the future thinkers really kind of helped pioneer this space. They were the first ones in 2015 to really move into this kind of uh, sense-making podcast space. Um, after that, you had Emerge and Rebel Wisdom kickstart, but yeah, I want to just take a minute here to, you know, you know, shout out all these characters in the middle of the circle here because what Daniel Forson did with Emerge for me particularly was really map out this this network for one of the first times, and what what followed from that with Rebel Wisdom starting their YouTube site kind of went over those those same ideas and that same chain of thinkers, and it started to create what we've come to think of as the liminal web. Um, a year after that, you had Jim Rutt and both and both kind of enter the scene. And then in 2020, we had the Stoa kickstart and really kind of bring that, that, that new fresh element to it. And the, the reason I highlight these is, is because there's a kind of objectivity to this, that if you have a look at all of these different platforms, the overlap of speakers is really, really high. And rather than kind of some idiosyncratic network that you think maybe you're the only one seeing, this kind of gave us proof that there was something distinct that was forming. So that's what that inner circle is about. And then the, the outer circle there are some other platforms that I'd suggest are also key players in the, in the liminal web um, that kind of maybe came a little bit later um, that also have quite a high crossover and overlap with, with a lot of these same thinkers. So if there's any new platforms to you there in that circle, I suggest you you check them out because each one of these different organizations is, is bringing something something quite special. And then if you look on that on the outside, those circles are, are what I think uh, kind of connect with the liminal web, but, but maybe some part of those communities are a part of this community, but not a complete overlap. So you can see there's a broad range of different subjects and ideas there. And some of them have more overlap with others than others. Perhaps game B is a good example, but but not entirely involved in what I'm seeing as the liminal web there. So that's a kind of overview. Generally, um, 
there's that maybe maybe denizen there is worth mentioning that that's kind of a little bit newer as well and, and not so many people have been familiar with that but there's a there's a really high crossover there and i'll mention them a little bit uh in more detail later on but that's a that's a collective out of the us so the last thing i want to mention before moving on from this slide is that the liminal web in how i'm seeing it isn't just these platforms and the people that are kind of more in the spotlight it's all the people listening as well and it's the communities that are into it and so this is you know a few hundred to a few thousand people and i've just kind of honed in on these platforms as a way to create the visual but it really is a more inclusive thing than just these speakers so yeah i thought i'd quickly go over my intentions for writing the piece in this presentation the first one is as a invitation to people that aren't familiar with this um with this network yet there's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of my friends that just haven't entered into this constellation of thought and i thought this would be a nice welcome for them to say hey this is what i've been into the last five years so for those of you on the call that are new to this this, this also goes out to you i hope it's a welcome to come and join the conversation uh secondly to try and go for a sense of increased coherence in the space so how can we kind of congeal a little bit closer? How can we make better sense of ourselves and, and get closer to what it is that we care about? Thirdly is that to do some collective shadow work. So if we define what our broader space is, we can start to look at some of the, the shortfalls and we can start to lovingly kind of check out our own shadow. And finally, uh, to explore where it can go because there's you know limitless potential for what this community can, can evolve into over time. And I thought it'd be a bit of fun to kind of delve into some of those visions. So how do you know if you're part of the liminal web? Um, I have a bit of fun here, but my definition is if you're absorbing about 30% of all your media content is coming from this space, I would suggest you're kind of officially in with the liminal web. If it's just 10%, I'd suggest you're kind of liminal-ish. And if it's more than 90%, I'd suggest you're part of the Illuminati, which I actually haven't joined yet. I've just heard rumors of it's a kind of secret society at the center of all this. And apparently, if you get there, if you get above that 90%, Daniel Schmachtenberger will appear to you in a dream and reveal the secrets of the meta crisis to you. So I'm looking forward to that day myself. Yeah. So this is the kind of what do we talk about in the liminal web? These are the topics. Uh, good old fashioned word cloud. So, you know, the meta crisis, emergence, wisdom, cultivation. Yeah, you can just have a bit of a look and see. These are the kind of things that we generally tend to riff on. And this is the kind of exoteric version of what we talk about. These are the subjects we approach. But what I wanted to also touch on, and perhaps more importantly, is that liminal feeling. So, this is the sense of what happens when we're talking about those things. I've experienced it a few times here in the store and many times over the last year and a half. And for me, it's quite a magical experience of that feeling of being deeply understood, of being in sync with other people in a way that doesn't happen so often. And it's this kind of liminal uprush of warmth and what feels like a sense of love for me and presence of kind of holding each other in a sense of uncertainty and it kind of flickers in and out like a candle. It might only be there for a few seconds, but it's invigorating. And that's, that's what really motivates me to kind of delve more deeply into this whole idea. How can we bring that forward and, and kind of make that a more steady experience for more of us? So, yeah, finding a name. The space has already been well described before as the sense-making web, intellectual deep web, metatribe, and an emergentia. And each of these, I think, was a really accurate description that looked at a different piece. But for me, probably the most recent there being the meta tribe, I think we just got to kind of transcend beyond the word meta after what's happened recently with Zuckerberg and, and Facebook. I think that's just going to grow bigger and bigger. So I thought, all right, well, what feels right? And I arrived at, at liminal because it's, it's already been used by a few people in the space. And I particularly like this spin on it, to occupy a position at or on both sides of a boundary or threshold. And for me, that really speaks true to a lot of what we're doing in the space of we're in the world, not quite of it. We're trying to be that bridge. We're trying to kind of midwife a new existence while hospice the old. And yeah, it's kind of, it's emerging and we're not quite sure. And this also has the idea of initiation going on through this process, which I like as well. 
so yeah, this is a bit of uh, new content from the article. I thought I'd, I'd, I'd map out a few of the pathways that I see of those of us here in, in the liminal web. I use the word hippie here lovingly and I classify myself there. And in fact, I see a bit of all of this inside of myself, each of these ones. So, so the hippies amongst us tend to kind of, uh, we hit the limits of unbalanced magical thinking and we maybe long for a more kind of rounded out experience. And that's my, what draws us into the liminal web that the philosophers inside of us maybe feel a bit stultified by the over intellectualization that can happen. And the intellectuals are kind of drawn to a more embodied and all encompassing experience there's quite a few religious folks in the scene who who still you know hold their faith, but they were they were feeling a bit restricted perhaps by the dogma and the theocracy. Um, there's activists and politicians who maybe kind of pushed up against the edge of that us against them mentality that they can see in spaces. There's business folk who've kind of seen the writing on the wall, maybe have a bit of guilt for how they made their profit before, and they're they're seeing that endlessly efficient extraction machine, and they want to kind of transcend that. There's artists who are maybe trying to come up beyond the echo chamber of their own ideas and their own creativity and connect into a kind of broader sphere. And there's scientists who maybe are seeing the limits of if we just over compartmentalize everything, we never get that integral kind of perspective. So there's some of the pathways of, of, of different people that, that enter the, the liminal web. And um, yeah, what are the qualities of people here in the liminal web? Or what are the qualities that we kind of aspire towards? And I'd suggest that we're perspective collectors i think that's what kind of unites a lot of these people we we can see things we we collect world views we look at things from different angles and try and hold that balance we, we we keep an eye on systems change but inner work is also critically important to us and uh tyson Juncker porter actually pointed this out to me he suggested that what he was seeing in the liminal web is really that we can lean into radical uncertainty so that's that ability to see things from different angles and not crystallize too much in one position, which is, which is quite a, quite a hard thing to pull off. And I think is what we're all practicing amongst each other. And then finally, we, we, we lean towards integrating some sense of science and spirituality. So yeah, let's have a look at the lineage. Where did this, where did this wonderful community uh, emerge from? And I was quite heartened to kind of put this together because it, it, it got me thinking, how beautiful it is that connection that we have i mean who is the generation before these guys and before them and how long has this kind of systems thinking and inner work kind of been joined together and yeah have a look see how many of these people you recognize um notice how many of them are smoking something uh some of the ones that you might not uh immediately recognize as Danella meadows in the middle there um she's a wonderful systems thinker i was introduced this year that's ursula Le Guin at the bottom everyone's favorite buff philosopher Ken Wilber down at the bottom there. Um, so yeah, th th these are systems thinkers that I would suggest have really laid a lot of the mycelium for what we're doing now, which I find to be quite uh, so much reassuring because in a way we can feel a little bit lost in amidst all the up and down of the meta crisis that's going on. But really there's people that have been laying down the different thoughts that we're entering for a long time and we're kind of carrying on that tradition. So yeah, if there was one book that kind of I felt was maybe at the heart of the liminal web, it would be James Cass, who's been on the store before, who I just kind of left us last year, I believe. And this book seems to have been a real inspiration for a lot of people. And it, the, the essence of what it's talking about really strikes to the core of what a lot of the liminal web kind of focuses on, of how do we move towards infinite games. And I, I just love that book cover. It's freaking awesome. So yeah, having a bit more fun here, if I were to be programming a kind of main stage at a liminal festival, if we were all gathering together and I wanted to try and gather the whole tribe, I wanted to titillate everyone, this would probably be the lineup that I'd put together. So if, if you think of it through the lens of sense makers, meta theorists, and um, systems poets, I'd suggest you've got kind of Schmachtenberger and Viveki there representing the sense makers. You've got Nora Bateson and Tyson Juncker Porter as the archetypal systems poets, and Hansi Freinhardt as a meta theorist. I, you, you could throw Ken Wilber into the mix as another meta theorist, but he seems to, for me, sit a little bit kind of adjacent to the liminal web, um, where these folks are kind of in 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 amongst it a little bit more. And then beyond that, um, who are some of the other active curators and common guests that we see? 
yeah, feast your eyes on this delicious bevy of humanity. It's, um, it kind of says a lot. You can kind of get a lot from the energy of, of these are the people that tend to gravitate through the liminal web. And, and again, these are just the nodes through which it comes through, but there's also the, all the people involved in the discussions and the communities around this. But you'll notice that, you know, if we look at our lineage these days, we're perhaps um, a little bit more feminine, a tiny bit less white, a little bit younger, and we're definitely smoking less cigarettes in public. So that's the kind of bit of a shift that you can see. I'll be interested to see what this looks like in another couple of generations time. So yeah, I thought I'd also have a bit of fun mapping on a left-right political spectrum, which admittedly, you know, isn't the most accurate at the best of times, especially when you're dealing with this much complexity. But I still think there's something useful in it. So the, if this first image shows... I think that basically most of what goes on in the liminal web is from the center to the kind of center left. So if you keep that in mind, that that is the, the spectrum within which this falls within. And this is uh, as a highly complex algorithm behind this. It's a kind of average of the Overton windows of all the guests that have been on the podcast mixed in a little bit with the vibe of who's running it. So yeah, a bit controversial. You're welcome to, you know, scoff or suggest that, that we, we mix it up it could be a fun discussion but yeah i think we move from the center to kind of the the left there you can see some of the platforms and then uh beyond that let's take a little look at the shadow and i i say this with love because i i see all of these aspects of the shadow in myself as well so I'm, I'm owning them there to begin with. And, and I hope we can point this out as a way of kind of working on it together. So what I've seen, and, and I hold the liminal web to quite high expectations. So I'm, 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 yeah, I just want to keep that in mind as I kind of delve into this. But sometimes I feel we're overly intellectual and analytical. I think we'll, the cognitive line is strong in this community. And often we're very much based in that mental space we're on computers a lot, we're writing a lot, we're in discourse a lot, and that can just lead us to kind of leave the body a little bit and become slightly kind of digital intellectuals, which, which can disconnect us from the broader system, I, I find. Um, kind of linked to that a little bit is this kind of elitism vibe going on. Of A lot of the language we use is quite specific. A lot of the highfalutin concepts uh, and, and just generally, sometimes I think we, we forget to bridge that gap between people that are new to some of these ideas and, and we, we kind of adding complexity, maybe a little bit more than it needs to be there sometimes, I'd suggest. So that, that I think that can alienate people. And those people on the outside might kind of just bounce right off when it's kind of doesn't seem like it lands or it's coming from the heart. So I think probably the biggest shadow we have is, is, is the diversity still. We're still fairly old, white, and male broadly. And that's, it's a complex and nuanced issue, but yeah, it's just a fact that it, we're also largely based in English speaking, Canada, Australia, the U S Europe, and we miss out on so many different worldviews and that's kind of just where it's formed mainly. So I'm hoping over time we can kind of include more stories and, and more voices from different backgrounds. Uh, yeah. Ego. I would suggest that a lot of us have a kind of unbridled ego a lot of the time, but we can, we can be a little bit full of ourselves. And, you know, this is a human trait. It's a quirk. But I, I think in these spaces, it's, it's really important because I feel we're trying to set a kind of new culture. So if we can really try and catch those moments where we're trying to kind of losing touch with that humility and that subtlety a little bit, um, I think that's important to be able to call each other out with that. I still think we've got a bit of game anus going on. So even though we're kind of pointing towards a new culture, there's a slightly competitive undercurrent just because we're still operating through YouTube platforms. We're still trying to get subscriptions. Some of us are trying to make a living out of this. And so, yeah, that element of competition and that element of kind of rivalrous dynamics can still be underneath. And um, I think that's worth, worth watching. And finally, it can get a little bit gloomy sometimes. We're so focused on all the problems in the world that sometimes we kind of tunnel vision a little bit on what's going wrong. And I think we can forget to celebrate that we're alive and that we're here with each other and that there's a, a lot of love and hope still, still with us despite the, the difficulties that we're facing. So yeah, that's something I'd like to, for us to look at a little bit. So there's some of the shadows. 
then this is more like, what are some of the challenges that we face as individuals, those of us that spend time in the liminal web? Um, the first I, I'm thinking of is save the world saturation. I know I experience all of these. And this first one is where everything is through the lens of how can we help make change and how can the world be a better place? And it can kind of lionize everything, take over. So all your relationships, all your art, even your spiritual practice is dedicated towards you know uh, a better world. And it can kind of make you a bit one-dimensional and, and overwhelm you. There can be a perpetual sense of being an outsider that we've carried for a lot of our lives. Often we're kind of leaving, busting out of other communities that we didn't feel really held in. And, and that can, you know, leave a, a kind of a complex inside of you of never really feeling like you're understood. Um, as Carl Jung put it, if a man knows more than others or thinks he does, he becomes lonely. And I think that really strikes true for a lot of us. Many here are, are struggling with how to make money without selling our souls. It's a, it's a simple thing. We think deeply about how we can make change. And sometimes we have to kind of do whatever we can to make a buck and it just doesn't resonate. It leaves us feeling off. Tied to that is I've noticed a lot of folks in the space are experiencing a sense of anxiety or depression or malaise at different moments. And we kind of tend to tie ourselves in complex cerebral knots because we tend to think so deeply and intensely about things. And that can actually be kind of detrimental to our, to our mental health. So that's something that I've seen a lot of. So yeah, I'd like to bring a sense of openness and, and slowness to, to some of this dialogue and, and just to be able to hold all those parts of ourselves and be real with that, real with each other. And finally, the, the book, podcast, and article crisis, a little bit more lighthearted, but also real, it's constant. I mean, about five years ago, you could keep up with everything in this space. And then all of a sudden you couldn't, there's just so much incredible material coming out that it's impossible to keep across it. There can be a little bit of FOMO with that. So yeah, liminal beef. So like all communities, there's, um, there's conflict, you know, there's, there's personality clashes. And the, the one that I'd kind of hone in here is, is what I see between the systems poets and the meta theorists. And um, I kind of categorize that here. I'm, I'm having Hulk representing the wild chaos of, of uh, the organic viewpoint of the systems poet captain america being a bit more of that structured meta theorist and you know they can they can be battling sometimes it can be a real difference in worldview around structure and, and hierarchy and particularly how development plays into that and yeah we've seen over the last year that can get kind of heated um I'm, I'm hoping that over time that we kind of move towards more of this kind of a dynamic here because i think there's a really profound synthesis to be found between these two camps and it's it's a whole nother talk in itself but it's really subtle and it's really important part of why i've kind of painted the liminal web picture how i did is to try and keep these two groups included and together and in conversation with each other because i think there's something really critical there it's kind of archetypal yang and yin masculine and feminine and and the, you know chaos and order and i think we need both these energies in our community and i think we need to really learn how to kind of fight and play and kiss and make up better and better as we go along. So yeah, one of the interesting developments that I see within the liminal web that's happened over time is this kind of aggregation around what I've been thinking of as sense-making collectives. So I have a community development background. So this is kind of the lens that I see things through. And it's also, I think, one of the greatest potentials that, that, that we have. We're kind of there's been a beacon put out by these different media platforms and people have answered that started to gather and cohere around these digital campfires as Peter puts it and future thinkers denizen rebel wisdom the stoa they've all followed a similar kind of a trajectory of putting out the putting out the content having the people gather digitally and having them realize that you know they're kind of after something a little bit more than just consuming content there's there's a will to create culture together to know each other more deeply to to form these kind of collectives online and make sense of the world together and 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 really sync up um future thinkers has really taken that to to the next degree and they're they're, they're setting up a, a smart village up there in canada um denizen again if you haven't heard of them really worth checking out based in the states jenny stefanotti has really been cohering that community and gathering them together in person and really kind of playing that role of community weaver which is tricky i want to just you know kind of send a bit of love to the people at the center of each of these 
spheres because you know running a full-on digital media platform as well as being a community builder that, that's two full-time jobs right there so it's something that they need support with and it's it's a tricky process doing community and and and, and we're going to see how that unfolds over time but uh this for me is something to keep an eye on because i think this is where we're going to watch some really beautiful things happen in the years ahead as we start to form into these more cohesive collectives So yeah, finally here, let's um let's have a look at what are some of the potentials for the liminal web as we go forward. Let's, you know, if we just dream a little bit, I'm gonna dare to kind of imagine what it could be. I guess I'll start off by saying it's already great, which is what we're doing is fantastic and it's rolling along. But if I'm real with myself, I I I've kind of been bitten by the bug of belonging, as it were. And I'm kind of I'm willing to step into this and say, yeah, this is a subculture. I'm going to be co-creating, I imagine, with this community. I can't imagine myself finding any other group of thinkers that I resonate more with. And that's exciting. You know, we've got years to see what kind of adventure we go on together. I'd like to see a few things happen. The first being a more cohesive online liminal community experience. So there's lots of little pockets of it going on. There's little kind of mighty networks, pages and circles, groups and discords but it's and that's cool to have all these different kind of aspects of our own little dark forest but I, I would like to see something I would like us to see connect more I've been kind of connecting the dots with my own podcast and there's so many amazing people that I want to be resonating with and touching base with and I just don't think we've quite found the right platform for all of us to experience together but I think that'll be on our horizon soon and I think that'll be quite a magical thing to be able to give a more full experience of our personas and our characters rather than just the odd podcast or article post um I'd like to see something emerge in the southern hemisphere and a kind of asia pacific time zone a lot of it's not really too conducive to that so I'd like to see that emerge um this idea of a liminal DAO came up uh cap slap um who will be speaking here at the store and next in a couple of weeks put forward this idea of creating a DAO to be able to uh, attract money to be able to then funnel towards different projects that have meaning and um yeah i think there's something to be explored in that I'm looking forward to understanding that more for me where it gets exciting is this idea of liminal collectives and villages i have a dream of living in uh, Eco Village. And that's an image that a friend of mine, he's a bioarchitect of the kind of thing that I want to end up living around liminal people. I want to be in collectives with them in person and online. And, I, and that's, that's something that I'm heading that trajectory over the long term. Um, and then finally, if we're really dreaming, a liminal movement, a political movement, something like the beat, something like the hippie movement that really, you know, touched the wider culture over time. I'd like to see some momentum around that. And, you know, we're, we're entering into the age of, of network states. If you're familiar with that idea, what, what we can do with blockchain technology and how we can connect up and create our own entities uh, is you know, kind of limitless. So I'm kind of leaving that door open and um, yeah, in person coming together and, and being with each other and making music and seeing each other and, and, going through life together. That's something that I hope to experience with more people in the liminal web. Yeah, so that's a wrap. Let's, um, let's move into the bit of dialogue and, and then get the discussion going. Awesome. Let's, let's share. Um, yeah, so uh, well done, uh, my friend. Uh, I really uh, appreciate um, your uh, Noah's Fear cartography skills. You're, you're such mm -hmm. an excellent uh, mapper. Um, and I quite enjoy this piece in the presentation and I, I'm hoping this session just can get like totally insider baseball. So I'm not going to like, you know, like, I'm just going to assume people know, or they're going to just like filter themselves out of the room. Uh, and we had a similar session of like, um, with Tyler Altman here at the Stowe on the, the Meta tribe, and it just got totally insider baseball, which, which I hope this one gets as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll warm you up with some maybe questions. Feel free to ask me questions and then we'll pivot to some, uh, um, questions in the chat. So like two, th I'm, I'm just going to like throw out you two, like, or just a bunch of things that I see like common in the perhaps liminal web. Um, two come up to mind right now is like one, I don't know if this is true, but maybe it's like one of the few mimetic tribes that like are such hyper aware of itself that they would do sessions like this. So that, that might be one, <laughs> one thing. And the other thing is that, and maybe I'm projecting here, but it's like, there's a part of me that doesn't want to be a part of a tribe. So part of us don't want to be a part of a tribe, uh, at least one that can be easily spotted. And uh, or they see themselves above the tribes or they can kind of they're like the mappers of the tribe. They're not actual, you know, tribal. Um, 
And I, and just like first thing I did when I read your piece, besides liking it, was like, how do I get out of the liminal web? <laughs> how do I get the stole out of that that circle? Like, a, um, so yeah, I'm curious if any thoughts emerge for you there. Yeah, well, let's do our best during this session. Let's try and rip the stole right out of it. Um, I agree with you. I think it is a bit of a thankless task trying to herd together a group of people that have defined you know, being categorized. And one thing that unites a lot of these folks is that they don't want to be part of another group, which is hilarious and ironic. But there's also, I'd suggest that there's a counterbalance to that of a really deep yearning to connect and have that sense of belonging. And I think that's the kind of tension that we want to hold of being, you know, never too attached, but also maybe admitting to ourselves sometimes that we really do long for uh, a kind of, at least intellectual community that we can resonate with, that can see and appreciate us for who we are and hold all the different parts of ourselves. So maybe one aspect of what you're talking about is just about composting it every few years so that we don't get too attached to it. So, you know, the liminal web isn't something that we set up as some institution. It's just an idea to describe what's happening and that can kind of organically evolve into something else every few years. So maybe that gives us a bit more room to move what do you think it's like um it seems like that's already happening because you know the first term that it was a placeholder for a while was like the sense making web um and uh there's an article that actually you uh linked in your piece uh from less wrong on the sense making web and i found that quite helpful like seeing like a, a rationalist tribe look at sort of this space and two other things that they said um that uh, they're sort of like themes that in this potential sense making web slash liminal web is uh, an openness, sort of like an intellectual mimetic openness, which creates here, at least here at the store, like a, like a weird quality. Cause it's just like, there's like, you know, seemingly there's no like mimetic coherency, but then, you know, if you kind of, uh, uh, if you just look at some of the guests, but if you look at some of the through lines, maybe there is some, but then, yeah. So that sense of openness and then uh, this like focus on cl collective intelligence getting dialogue right, getting conversation right, which seems quite true for the people in this space, like not only from like getting the, having good faith and propositions, but also speaking from that heart place and having that empathy and, and compassion there. So I'm curious if, if those two things land. Yeah, they do. And as you mentioned that, it, something I wanted to touch on is the potential that I don't think we've tapped yet. I think we've all been undergoing this really amazing, exciting adventure and experiment in this kind of dialogue together over the last couple of years, particularly since the Stoa kicked in. And I just think there's so much further we can go together, such a, a much more, in a way, I think we're prototyping. I mean, what have we got? We've got Zoom rooms and we've got chat groups. What level of coherence can we experience? This is the question that I have for the Liminal Web. Like, how can we really model what it's like? How can we really reach the peak of understanding and cohesion and inclusion in these spaces and kind of model that because I feel there's still quite a long way for us to go. And so there's, there's excitement for me around that, around how we can keep stepping into that. And yeah, I just think we're getting started basically. And what something I wanted to ask you, something I mentioned in the article is that I think if I had to have a shorthand for the liminal web, it would be everyone that's been on the store. Yeah, I think your selection is really on point. I wanted to ask you, is there any criteria that you can put into words? What's the secret Limburg algorithm that goes into all the different folks that you bring together? Well, I, I think one hand is uh, out of all the um, kind of the, the people that you put in the liminal web, I would say that it's fair to say the store is probably the most memetically diverse. Um, but there, there's something that like a quality of like, I don't know, good faith, but I don't want people like whose, whose thing is outrage porn, even if like they're saying good things, doesn't matter what side they are. Like, could I see myself holding sp like space for this person and they're going to hold space for other people. And if I can't really see that, if like just totally bent for some kind of like outrage porn culture war energy, then I just don't want anything to do, do with them. Um, and so I think out of all the sort of like on a proposition level, it's so kind of diverse, but then I think that's one consistency there is they're actually coming, they're actually earnestly believing what they say, even if it's controversial, mm -hmm. controversial. And so that's, that's, uh, um, that attracts me because I, I like that I'm the novelty junkie, like, like you are, and a lot of people are, 
And uh, if they can have a conversation, then yeah, let's have a conversation. Mm, so earnestness, I think that's a pretty good description. And I think what you, what you point to there is, is another one of the amazing potentials of what I see in the liminal web. I mean, if we're living in an age of increased polarity right now, how can we model what it's like to hold the most diverse array of worldviews in a generative and respectful way? I mean, as I delve more deeply into this space, I'm really starting to transcend that sense of left or right. And there's something profoundly important in that. And yeah, I think that's, that's what's going on here. And it's actually, it's actually quite a special thing. Uh, so let's, let's build some questions. Uh, Brendan, do you want to uh, ask a question, your question? Did you say Brandon or Brendan? Uh, you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, yeah, I don't think uh, Mr. Graham Dempsey actually asked a question in the chat here. Um, but yeah, so I was, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, Joe, uh, you know, you and I were privately talking about this. I've talked to a few people about this after you published that. And, you know, we were talking about, I've talked to a few people about how do we categorize these movements, these people, these organizations in terms of the approach to the meta crisis? Because one thing I'm seeing a lot of is there's a lot of agreement, consensus that we have these several different crises and not everybody agrees 100% on what's the most important, but almost everybody seems to agree, okay, we got ecological, educational, political, socio-cultural, yada, yada, and they're all interrelated. And um, I think I see that there is some disagreement of, of approach and what we can do and what we ought do. Some people are saying, okay, the dark age is coming and it's just going to come. Some people are saying we need to get ahead of this through technology or through social cult, socio-cultural uh, organization or whatnot. Uh, so how would you maybe, uh, you know, see that there are certain primary hinge points or agreements or disagreements? Uh, and, if, and if it turns out that you can't exactly uh, answer this right now, because I think you already told me you, it's a little hard for you to, you know, in a private message, you already told me that. But I just wanted to throw it out there. And it's something that I'm interested in co-creating on, if anybody. So you can just do your best if you'd like to try to address that right now. Yeah. So just to get clear, the question is, what are the differences that we see in the space and, and, and how to categorize them? Yeah. Yeah. In terms of the meta crisis, like what do we do to save society, so, uh, society in the world or, uh, or what can we do or what we, I guess, can't do? I, I don't know. It's a pretty open-ended question, but you know, just whatever, however you'd like to answer that. Whatever I'm going to refer people to the article that you're working on around it because I've seen what you got going and I think that's the best answer. But I think Peter did a, a wonderful job of mapping out the mimetic tribes a, a few years ago and that, that, that's a continually updating adventure. So yeah, I say watch this space for Brandon's upcoming article. Yeah, thanks. I, I just, um, uh, it's only on Wikiversity now and I'll put it in the chat. And if anybody wants to co-create with me, I, I wanna actually publish something a little more detailed uh, in the next like week or two, three weeks here. Thank you. And that, that makes me think of this co-creation potential that we have. We're just barely touching on, that's maybe something that typifies this the space as well is that openness and willingness to co-create and to cohere. Because if we can really get this kind of, digital community hive mind brain thing going on, at least within the liminal web, that is seriously potent because we do have a lot of different perspectives here. So yeah, it's an example of that. All right. Uh, Tata, do you want to uh, share something? Yeah, yeah, sure. I can try to. I'm a little bit high, everybody. So um, let's see. So something I've been really thinking about um, I've been canceled in my own life, so I'm sure a lot of you have been. But really understanding that online culture is turning behavior into place. So actually, when we engage in certain online behaviors, it develops a sense of locality. And I think in Web 2.0, we haven't had a sense of behavior being placed. So like it hasn't been as grounded, if that makes sense. Our sense of people with calm behavior, we still don't go like, where are we? Where are we in the liminal web? We don't know where we are. And I think what's going to happen in the next iteration with the metaverse and so on is this behavior is actually going to get a sense of more place and belonging. And I think that in itself is probably going to be this kind of 
mycelial network connection between the URL and the IRL, especially for our you know, sense of things. And I think the liminal DAO and all that thing is very real. Um, I have a lot to say about that, but um, the other piece is also that essentially the internet is reorganize, reorganizing how we do our human relationships algorithmically. So whatever we program ourselves into the web ourselves is going to be something we pass on to our descendants, if that makes sense. How we behave with each other on the web is actually this kind of tribal gift we can pass on. So that is a thing I'm really looking at in terms of like a highly URL, IRL integrated future. So I don't know, that's that's my slap. <laughs> I don't know, is, is that good? That's good for me. Okay, cool, I'm, I'm like pretty high, so I just went off. But... I'm feeling that contact high, it's awesome. It's lifting oh, okay. my <laughs> this, um, is, this is really dope, by the way. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, really it's nice to, nice to see you and have you here, Tata. Yeah, yeah. Um, what you mentioned here, as as I was feeling into you as you were speaking and I was feeling into the room. So this is where you're going to pick up on my hippie background coming into the space. But I'm really always pushing up against the edge of like a real heartfelt coherence. There can be a sense in Zoom room sometimes of this kind of void space. And the minute you click off, it's gone. And I'm, I'm really trying to lean into like what you mentioned. How can we show up in these spaces the way that I would in my lounge room? I'm treating, I'm trying to show up in that same way, trying to hold you in that same way and really bring the heart and the self and the openness to that and that level of warmth. And there's a part of me that's really pushing against that because I'm afraid that I'm about to give my soul over to the digital demons that be in the years ahead, especially as AR and VR kick in. But I really feel a yearning to kind of unite with other people in this web and share our lives together in really meaningful ways. So that sense of place that you point to is gonna be gonna be critical to that. Yeah, and may, may I add one little response to that? I love it. And um, I think one of the things that might also help us in managing the web is to develop a different felt sense of it in the first place. And so me and a bunch of techno animus agents have been talking about something that we've been calling the internet which is yin and internet put together. So what we mostly have in the world is yang internet. So you get text, you got rationality. What you miss out is the small details like breath, what you, what you talked about, Joe, is like feeling into the room, sensing in. And there is very low grade data that's being transmitted. Like one of the, one of the things we have now is that essentially our, our intimacy, the bit rate has really disintegrated over 30 years. You know, even if you look at an audio signal, we went from vinyl to streaming and people actually think streaming is the higher level kind of thing, like higher technology development, but the signal itself is degraded. And this is in general, like something that's been happening to human experience. So one of the ways I've been talking about how to deal with this in this coming age is to like see how we can put yin back into the internet, if that makes sense, instead of having a yang internet. And I think this, the sense of this is actually there's an emergent web that's not created yet, as opposed to looking at the web that exists, it's the web that does not, and like switching our paradigm around it. But anyways, this is kind of like, I think, fits into that sensing and all that. And I just wanted to throw that, <laughs> throw that into there. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. We definitely have to have a the internet the session at the, the store. I hope that uh, <laughs> totally. Uh, we, have, we have a whiskey date that's uh, still outstanding. Um, yeah, no, I really like that. And that's, that's you know, something that I want to do more at the store. I just kind of like really feel into things. We have a wisdom gym here and we're doing all these kind of like cool practices. Um, and the other thing you said that quite I quite liked is sort of modeling certain behavior uh, for future generations. And what kind of inspires me about my journal sometimes is that like, oh, my, like, hopefully I have a kid, my future kid's going to be reading this. So how do I want to show up from it to him? And then how do I want to show it up to other people? Like, how do you be virtuous in the hyper conversation? Like, how do you do that? Uh, and you got to have your heart, that heart space, the stuff that, you know, Tato was just talking about in it. Um, so yeah, that, that quite inspires me. Uh, and, you know, Jason, can I, can I, Jason Snyder, can I put you on the spot? Because, you know, your, your Twitter game is pretty, pretty tight and we were talking about that earlier today i'm curious if you have any thoughts to share you're, you're on mute uh 
you did put me on the spot a little bit, but, but that's okay. Let's see if I can see if I can riff. No, I've been turning over my mind as you know, I hear people talking about this relationship between digital localism, which I think is one way to describe what we want to create, or kind of like creating a sense of place on the internet and physical localism and how those two interact. Um, I really like this concept of cosmopolitan localism where we're creating this kind of embodied network on the ground. It could be, you know, just uh, community engagement. It could be building an eco village. It could be whatever, uh, but being part of a larger network and this kind of fundamental tension between those two things, or it couldn't be seen as a fundamental tension because, you know, your attention, your energy put towards this larger network, the cosmopolitan element um, can distract you from, you know, you're, you're on the internet instead of, you know, volunteering in a soup kitchen or something, right? Um, but on the same, at the same time, they can, it can become a, a virtuous positive feedback loop where they reinforce each other. Uh, so an example, just one small little example that happened to me the other day is somebody found me on the internet. He lives an hour away. He's interested in similar stuff that I am. We're both interested in like homesteading and things of that nature. And now we're visiting each other's places. We're helping each other out with various things. And it's just funny to me that it took the internet uh, to, to meet kind of my relative neighbor, you know, an hour away. Um, and and I, I just see more and more opportunity um, to kind of merge this digital localism with physical localism and, and to create this kind of, you know, to, to maybe overcome the tension between the digital and the physical um, and actually have them, have them be positive, positive sum. So yeah, that, that, that's the best I got putting them on the spot. Thanks, Jason. Any uh, thoughts of life for you there, uh, Joe? Yeah. I um, I had a similar experience after publishing this article. Someone in the liminal web, living in Melbourne, another content creator, reached out, and we had tea out the front of my house, and it was electric. And maybe this weaves in another avenue of my explorations, which is like the personal development, shadow work, integration side of things. I find that if we really want to keep evolving our culture, we need to create new little liminal spaces of belonging together, kind of micro solidarity. And to do that with other people in person that share this same set of perspectives and worldviews and cultural biases is really incredible. And I think it might actually be a prerequisite to do the level of depth work required, particularly in terms of shadow work. I'm finding that I might actually need to be in the presence of people that share a similar worldview. So I'd suggest that there's even a kind of double urgency for me in, in connecting in that way, because it's going to allow me to unlock different parts of myself that I'm not sure I'll have access to if I'm just kind of circling and doing process work with, with whoever just happens to be closest to me. Uh, regionally, as opposed to the people that I really resonate with. So yeah, I have a lot of impetus to connect up the physical and the digital. Um, I see myself in the future as having an in-person human collective and a digital human collective and there being an overlap, but I'm going to hold space for both. So that's kind of where I'm at. Cool. Um, so the, the chats are, uh, like I'm not following them right now. Uh, and um, I'm seeing some spicy, juicy shares. Uh, so my sense is maybe return, uh, turn the recording off. We just have like a wild open conversation. But before we do that, Joe, um, any kind of like, maybe any questions or curiosities that you have that you could maybe source the, that you want to source the STOA with to help you out with your intellectual explorations. I think I'm just keen to keep delving into this discussion with everyone. I really want to try and weave in as much of the wisdom in here as possible. So yeah, let's get into it is where I'm at. I want to hear from more voices and more ideas. All right. I'm going to shut the recording off now.